welcome to Great Question. I'm your host, Alex Fleming, spellcaster and podcaster and game designer. Uh, welcome to the Inner Sanctum. I'm going to be talking about my independent video game, Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner, coming out for Mac and PC this December 2020. Uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about that, my process. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the games that I am currently playing, my thoughts uh, about game design, and then I'm going to do some tarot card reading for myself this episode. In the future, I'm going to be having guests doing tarot card readings for them, doing interviews, just like I did uh, on Great Question in the past. Um, but I haven't figured out the technical stuff 100% yet, and my goal here is very much to get this content out to you, the listener. Uh, I hope you are enjoying listening on iTunes. We're on iTunes now. Uh, again, we were on iTunes before, but we're back. Um, and on YouTube, if you're watching, hello. I uh, hope you like my new hair. Uh, and yeah, I've got a, a new microphone. I'm testing this out. It was just really easy to use. I had this weird kind of hum in the microphone I was using before. It's a shame because I... I love that mic. I love an SM58. It's such a good mic, but uh, the sound of it is so good. But I don't know if it was from the mixer or what. I had this weird hum. Anyway, uh, if you didn't catch my surprise episode last week, you can go and listen to that. Um, but the short of it is I started this podcast again after years of taking a hiatus uh, because tarot cards have led me to uh, becoming the game designer that, uh, that I am now. I've been afraid to take seriously, um, truth be told. Uh, and so I, I do want some of this because this is this is me time. This is my podcast. Um, I want some of this to be about my development, to talk to you about what it's like to make a video game, especially as an indie. I'm just one person um, except for uh, my uh, partner and art designer, uh, Mike Fallick. Shout out. He's got a great podcast. Hashtag cult, check it out um, wherever wherever you find podcasts uh, like this one. Um, but he's uh, a really talented artist, and he's done a lot of it, or most of the art for this. Um, all, the, all the art that looks good, that's not the stand-in stuff. And then I, I do everything else. Um, I've, I've taught game design for 10 years, uh, and I know, I, I, I know games very well. I've been a, a, a gamer or whatever the heck that means my whole life um but uh but programming and development uh there's there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it there's so many hats to wear so many hats um so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about that here on this show let's get into it i've been working on the user interface a lot this this last week um i spent a lot of time thinking about the gameplay loop like what is it you're actually doing in ultimate dungeon cleaner which is of course uh cleaning it's a game where you play as grem a goblin janitor um and you have to clean up your dungeon after all the battles that take place and uh uh the main obstacle is time uh, i did that because i wanted a, like an action kind of bullet hell feel if you're familiar with that kind of, of game jargon uh, where there's so much going on on the screen and you're kind of in a frenzy to, to keep up. Because um, I like playing a lot of those games. I'm going to get to the games that I'm playing. Uh, so I really focused on like that screen and the heads-up display. I've got a mini-map. I've got the thing that shows you lives. Uh, there's a bunch of other things that appear depending on what power-ups you have from the lost and found. Um, and actually, one thing that I did... Uh, that I did last week that I'm very proud of is I I added a bunch of auras for all of the things that you collect in the lost and found that have value. So I got a lot of feedback in some of my testing before that people got like the boots that make you go faster or the magic broom that uh, makes it so every time you sweep the radius of, of stuff that gets swept up that disappears like your hitbox basically um, that gets bigger uh, significantly like doubles the size so you've got this big broom that's got like an area of effect sweep uh, it's really cool but people were were like they were talking to me and they were like uh, is this doing anything I don't know if this is working um, because they didn't have a side-by-side -side comparison or, or anything so I just added uh, I added a bunch of particle effects I added these auras uh, around Grem, around your player character. So if you have anything, because in the Lost and Found, if you haven't played the demo, you can you can play the beta, I should say. I'm a game developer. I'm in the industry now. Uh, 
We're in open beta. You can play the game. You can test it out. You can send it back to me and, and tell me what you think, honestly. Uh, I'm very curious. Uh, but so I, I got this feedback before, and, and um, where was I going with this? The point is, uh, yeah, you can get the boots, and you have this cool like trail effect now. So you know visually that things are different if you have one of the items. At the end of each level, Grim finds an item in the lost and found. And, and so now you can tell if you get something that's valuable or something that's just for looks as soon as you start the next level. Um, that was a big goal. Okay. The, yeah, the UI I talked about, I started talking about it, um, during the, like, the scenes where you are getting ready to start a level and during the, the first moment, the, like, start screen of the game, I was really concerned with just getting the info, making sure that instructions were there, making sure that you knew how to get started, how to load a game, uh, load a saved game, how to start a new game that there was some text so that like I could tell some kind of story. So Graham will say a few, a few lines of, of monologue, I guess, uh, right before each level. And, uh, and I, I, I spent some time thinking about this, but I got some feedback before that it, it didn't look clean or, or it was hard to tell where to focus. So I tried to really put the focus uh, on the fact that you can see what level is coming up, like uh, in the get ready screen, as I call it, you can see what level is coming. You can see sort of a preview from a zoomed out perspective and uh, and then there's dialogue, but it's it's it, it takes up less of the screen. And I, I will um, I'll have some screenshots for the YouTube version of this next week for the next episode. Uh, but yeah, I spent a lot of time just making sure that buttons were evenly spaced or using the horizontal button group layer tools. I'm not using the right technical words for all this stuff, but um, it was tedious. It's uh, it's the kind of work that's good to have a podcast on uh, during, actually. Um, and then I, I did some, uh, some very brain-intensive work uh, trying to make an audio manager, and I just... I got... I got stuck. Uh, I need to look in the doc, look into the documentation for the audio manager. Sorry, for the audio source and audio listener on Unity. Um, that's a bunch of jargon. I use Unity. Uh, it's software. I use it to make Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner. I feel like I'm losing you. Um, please don't. Please don't go. Uh, the big uh, win, though, this week for me as a game designer was creating um, this new feature in Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner called Relax Mode. Uh, I had I had spoken to someone um, who was an indie game developer uh, out of Finland. He was on uh, a bunch of teams, uh, or a, a bunch of indie studios, I should say rather. And uh, they had gotten a lot of feedback around accessibility, and so he passed on some of that that wisdom to me. And I've also seen this in other places online, but. Um, uh, my core mechanic for my game is having a timer. That is the thing that I I started with a long time ago. And um, so I wanted to make sure that I have a version of, of the game that is accessible to people who aren't as good at playing kind of, you know, fast dexterity-based games uh, or, um, or those who are... Uh, you know, just not uh, have some kind of uh, uh, issue with uh, arthritis or I, I actually this is a good segue into the next um, segment because I was playing Dead Cells. Um, so here's what I've been playing segment. I, I was playing Dead Cells, uh, which is a really fun game. I got it on Steam. I wish I had a controller, but my fingers got physically tired pressing the buttons because it was a very button mash heavy game. And that's what I designed Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner to be. I wanted it to be a game where you could just kind of lose yourself mashing some buttons, uh, focusing on that for a while, not have to worry about the rest of the world. Just focus on cleaning this dungeon. 
Um, so Dead Cells is great. It's a, it's a platformer, roguelike game where you die a lot. Um, you're this faceless person, and every time you die, you come back without a face. Uh, but you can unlock blueprints for better weapons and uh, new skills and stuff uh, by you know getting further in the level each time uh, you, you go for a run, a run of the game. I'm using air quotes if you can't see me. Uh, so it's cool that it like tracks how long each run of the game is before you die. Uh, and there's achievements around that. Um, so it kind of encourages different play styles in this way, where sometimes you want to just run through the level as quickly as you can, and there's an achievement for that, or you like a, a bonus or power up or something. And sometimes you want to play very cautiously and slowly and just take your time with it. Uh, and there's a, there's a different bonus you get for that. Um, if you like kill 30 enemies before uh, taking any damage or anything like that. So uh, I wanted to make sure that multiple play styles um, were, were encouraged by Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner. So that's why I have the, this new mode, Relax Mode. There's no timer. Uh, and you can just clean at your leisure. There's going to be different music for it. And this is why I was getting into the audio manager stuff and, and why I need to to figure out that puzzle. Uh, independent game development is so much about just solving different puzzles. That's what's fun about it and what's challenging about it. Uh, so I told you about Dead Cells a little bit. The only other game I've really been playing this week, I've been working so hard on the UI. I spent so much time on that. Uh, but I've been playing Hearthstone a little bit. And uh, that game is, it's just, it, I've been with it for a long time since, like, one of the, I wasn't there from the beginning, but a couple years in, um, a couple years after that I joined. And uh, I played Magic the Gathering a lot. If you are familiar with that game, this is, like, the same thing, but it's digital, except there's also another digital version of Magic the Gathering that is actually Magic the Gathering, and, and it uses, uh, uh, Hearthstone uses the lore from World of Warcraft, which I never played, but I played the Warcraft games. I played Warcraft 2 a lot. So um, anyway, uh, Hearthstone is fun, is what I'm trying to say. And it's a card game uh, where you play as different fantasy classes battling. Um, but one of the things I've been thinking about a lot uh, for collectible card game design is how much how much uh, those kind of card games are, re they're really just like, how do you want, what style do you want to play this game in? What flavor do you want? That's so much what the game is. Because uh, you're playing against other people, and it's always the same. There's only a couple of win conditions. It's kind of hard for me to formulate this. What I'm trying to say is, like, if you play a, a linear video game like Mario or... I mean, Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner has some, some random elements, but it's pretty linear. There's a, a series of levels. Right now there's 20 levels available in, in the beta, um, separated into two zones. There's zone one of 10 levels. That's kind of like the intro. Um, I'm trying to use sort of the... the Nintendo Miyamoto uh, kind of philosophy of, of trying to teach you to play through the through the game. So the first 10 levels are really the intro, the tutorial. Then uh, levels 11 through uh, 11 through 20 are where it starts to get more challenging and where more mechanics are introduced. Um, and then there's going to be a third zone, and I'm going to I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. Uh, but that third zone, I have I have the concept, but I haven't designed it on paper. I haven't actually mapped it out yet. I've done a couple levels, I've sketched them, but I haven't done the rest of that. Anyway, so this all goes back to I was thinking about Hearthstone, and just right now I'm playing a ranger uh, deck and a, a, a mage deck, and I'm feeling overwhelmed because they just released a new expansion. And so I, I had all this gold, uh, I had all, uh, all this gold, and so I spent it on a lot of new cards. You get gold just from playing and doing quests, and, you know, it's a free-to-play game. Uh, and uh, so I bought a lot of, of packs of this new thing, and I'm just, there's so many different types of decks that I want to try. There's so many different styles 
of achieving victory and that is very appealing to me as a player and i know i um when i originally wanted to do ultimate dungeon cleaner i wanted to have like three different characters to choose from like graham was going to be sort of the main character as a goblin but i wanted to have maybe a, like a little sort of fire elemental uh guy with uh, a, a spray bottle and like maybe a little ooze a green ooze with uh, a paper towel um, and a feather duster or something um, and uh, just out of concern for art animation assets and budget uh, and the fact that I wasn't doing the final art um, that Mike has been helping with that and uh, I mean he's great I don't want to I don't want to have things conflict with the style, too. Uh, so I just focused on Grimm, and, and I'm going for that more sort of old school, I guess it is more sort of a JRPG uh, style of just, here's a hero's story. It's the more sort of Link model. But anyway, I digress. Point is, it's so fun to be able to express yourself through playstyle. Um, the only way I really have that in Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner expressed in, in the game mechanics was was randomly was like depending on the different lost and fo lost and found items that you uh, collected um, but now uh, you have a little bit more option uh, you have a little more control on what kind of mood you want you want just chill let's let's just clean up this dungeon let's really enjoy it uh, slowly because it's late at night I'm trying to relax and get ready for bed or do you want um, Something to distract you, something to take your mind off of what you're thinking about, something that will command your focus. Because I think that's what I like about twin stick shooters, bullet hell games, the kind of space invaders. Oh my gosh, there's so much happening on the screen. Um, the, the fast action, super hexagon kind of games. Um, they just, they force you to focus on it and you can't worry about the rest of the world. Um, so I'm trying to accomplish those two things right now. So let me get into the final segment, uh, which is going to be some live tarot. I have here uh, the deck that I'm using. Uh, this is the Mythic Tarot. It was gifted to me. Uh, so that's how you know. It's, uh, it's a good deck. Uh, I have a bunch of other decks, and if you have been listening, don't worry. Uh, the, dog tarot uh, the Dog Tarot deck is coming back. The Goddess Tarot deck is coming back. Uh, all the decks... Don't worry. I'm going to be full of decks. Oh, boy. Um, anyway, so let's do a reading, shall we? I, uh, I wanted to ask the cards... In this particular segment, what I should do for the third zone. I mentioned, um, so I have the first zone, that's sort of the tutorial, the first, I guess it's nine levels. The first zone is all sort of classical dungeon look. Um, what does it even mean? I guess like Dungeons and Dragons, that's classical. Uh... Inter or video game classical, but that sort of... Uh, Legend of Zelda, just stone dungeon lit by torches. The second zone, uh, I wanted sort of a, a wizard's... Wizard sin wizard's sanctum? I don't know what word I was trying to say there for a sec. Uh, but there's like ice patches. So it's kind of a sterile white with um, with blue hints. It's very white and blue. The third zone, all I know for sure is that I want I want it to have more of, more of a cavern, like volcano, lair of a dragon kind of a vibe. And I have a bunch of art already that supports this, so I'm kind of locked into that. Uh, but mechanically, I wanted to add some new things, and I was thinking about... Um, like overflowing trash cans that uh, burp more carnage into the levels for Grem to clean them up and uh, for locked doors that have to be unlocked by cleaning up certain areas. I guess I don't need to get into all the details of the mechanics. I have some ideas for some mechanics, but I don't have a great idea for structure here. The For how to compose, yeah, composition is what I'm thinking about, how to compose all this stuff um, into nine levels you know how do you how do you how 
can even spread that out between the first level and the and the, the final level. Uh, how do you introduce the mechanics slowly in a way that makes sense where you can teach the player? These are things I'm trying to do with it. Okay, so uh, I'm getting distracted because I did drop a card. I dropped a card on the ground while I was shuffling, so that's kind of significant. Um, so that's going to be my first card here. I'm going to do a quick three card. Uh, and that card is the Page of Swords. That's interesting. I'm going to draw two more cards really quickly. So that's going to be my past here. Present is the Eight of Cups. And the future is the Four of Swords. So let me take a quick look at this. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to focus on the divinatory uh, text here. I'll explain in a sec. Page of Swords. Let's find it. Swords, Knight, page 10, Swords. Here we go. We meet the beginnings, the primitive beginnings of the element of air. When the Page of Swords appears in the spread, it is time to meet within oneself the childlike curiosity and potential for spiteful gossip which the page embodies, and which marks the beginning of the use of mental powers. Mental powers, okay, so thinking about it. I don't know if I said this, if I really said this out loud uh, beforehand, but I definitely had an intent going into this, specific to the that, like, Zone three, it's I, I, the question that I'm asking the cards has been, I thought about this before the show, how should I approach designing the third zone, the composition? So I'm seeing here uh, the starts talking about just, just thinking about it from an intellectual point of view, of course, maybe a little too on the nose. Um... Let me continue. One may oneself be the victims of others' gossip, or there can be a tendency to start petty quarrels and be irritable and difficult, but these things reflect the emergence of new ideas. And true independent thinking, often in one who has been accustomed to accepting the views of others. Uh, so I know in the past... Uh, I've been seeking out a bunch of resources i i copied down info from a talk from game developers con conference game developers conference i almost said convention uh I took, there was this this talk about like how do you fix problems in your game design and there was this other thing that i found that was all about using the hero's journey and narrative design and thinking about your game in, in those terms and in my heart, I just keep thinking, yeah, I could use someone's method, I could use the right method, but I feel like I have to follow my inner guide here. So Page of Swords in the past position is confirming this as the position that I've set up. Let's take a look at the Eight of Cups. Cups, 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 Nine of Cups, Eight of Cups. Okay, I, uh, I've been getting Cups a lot lately, like a lot. Um... I want to say since the pandemic hit. It's been cups, and then since I started the podcast stuff, I've been getting a lot of wands, and that checks out because I feel like the wands related to the creative energy of the podcast. So uh, so I got... In, in this particular deck, uh, one of the things that I think is so cool is the suits are matched up to different Greek myths. All the major arcana are matched up to Greek gods and myths. Um... I liked this stuff as a kid, but I'm not a scholar, so I don't know this stuff that well. So I'm learning a lot. And uh, and, and cups have been the story of uh, Psyche and Aphrodite. No, sorry, Psyche and... Uh, uh, who? What? Oh my god, okay. Psyche and Eros. Right, 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 right. Okay, right, we're doing a show. You're here. You're still with me? You're still with me. Thank you. Um, Psyche and Eros, uh, I don't know too much about the myth, but uh, Psyche doesn't know that she, she's a woman. She doesn't know she's marrying a god uh, or demigod. And uh, Eros says, don't look at me. Keep your eyes closed during a marriage. You can't see me because he doesn't want her to know he's a god. And... Uh, 
anyway, later she betrays the promise and looks at him because, like, of course you're going to do that. Of course you're going to look at your husband. This is insane. Um, but then they he dies. She has to go rescue him from the underworld. And for that, she becomes a god, goddess. God, does it matter? Uh, you tell me. Let me know. Uh, okay. Point is, the numbers are different points in the story. So we've got the Eight of Cups here. And, uh, ah, right. So Aphrodite gave Psyche the way to, to rescue Eros uh, by going into the underworld to bring back a pot of Persephone's beauty cream. So the Eight of Cards portrays Psyche performing the final task. I'll put it up for the camera for you to see. Uh, Psyche is shown empty-handed, descending the steps into darkness of the underworld, her face set in sadness and resignation because she realizes she will probably not survive the journey. Behind her abandoned stand eight neatly stacked golden cups. Cool. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at the divinatory meaning here. On a divinatory level, On a divinatory level, the Eight of Cups implies the necessity of giving something up. The truth of the situation must be faced. No further action will avail, and there is no way to go except let go. Often this is accompanied by depression, for the underworld is a place of mourning. The future cannot be manipulated. We go empty-handed into the unknown. Um, yeah, sure. Here we are in the present... And I am just, I mean, I'm trying, I, I have some sketches that I've made. But isn't that every creative journey is just going into the unknown and creating something out of nothing? Uh, and uh, yeah, sure, I'm in the depression phase of it where I made, I made like three levels uh, on paper, but I haven't really play tested them because I... I don't know if they're. I don't know if I like them. I'm not happy with them. Let's go to the Four of Swords. That's my uh, future. Future position. Swords. Ten. Two, eight, seven, three, four. Okay. Here's the Four of Swords. The card of the Four of Swords portrays Orestes in exile in Phocis. Oh yeah. Sorry about all my mispronunciation of Greek stuff. He sits peacefully on the ground, contemplating four swords which lie in a pattern before him. Behind him can be seen a pale, quiet sky with little puffs of cloud and a vista of snow-clad peaks. So the swords have been the story of Orestes, the Oresteia. I'm familiar that it's a myth and a play and a tragedy. Uh, something about a cursed family. I haven't gotten a lot of swords. I got handful of swords but not enough for me to really understand the full picture not like i have with cups where i could remember stuff without actually looking at the book even if i wasn't sure if i remembered it correctly um so here we see orestes in a place of banishment he has not yet received his command from the god apollo and so he is at peace although he is not permitted to go home the Four of Swords suggests a period of introversion and reflection of emotional recuperation after the outbreak of conflict in the Three. Yada, yada, yada. Let's go to the divinatory level. On a divinatory level, the Four of Swords heralds a time of quiet recuperation and introversion where the individual can build up strength in preparation for further efforts. If the card appears in a spread, it is perhaps wise to accept solitude or withdrawal and not seek to fill the time with activities, for some stillness is needed to marshal one's thoughts and order one's life. Okay. What do I make of this? I asked the cards. How should I approach composing the last nine levels of what I plan to release for Ultimate Dungeon Cleaner? for at least, you know, before an expansion or anything, for the third zone, for the red dragon-filled cavern. 
And I have, the answer is I was at the Page of Swords coming at this from a place of really wanting to go my own way, even though I knew there were a couple of approaches that I could take already. Uh, I, I surrender to not knowing, <sighs> to, to not having the answer immediately, to having to listen to my inner guide. That's what I'm, I'm hearing in the Four of Swords. Uh, a place of stillness, a place of contemplation of inner voices. Okay, so I did a morning read this morning. I do these uh, single cards and I got uh, the Magician earlier. And it was suggesting from the reading from the book, suggesting listening to my inner guide. And that's what I'm that's what I'm hearing here is just what I have to do is meditate on my design and think about what's fun for me and what I enjoy. And uh, and that's gonna have to be what informs my design. What kind of levels do I like? What are later levels? It's funny because I feel like I never spend that much time on later levels in a lot of in a lot of games because I like roguelikes. I like games where you're constantly trying new playstyles. What games have I finished? I've been a lifelong gamer. A lot of the games that I love, I haven't necessarily finished. Um, so I think one of the <laughs> what what comes to mind, I did finish Diablo 2, I did finish StarCraft, that was the time when I, I finished the most games of my career when I was a teenager, and playing a lot of Blizzard games. And I liked that they changed the setting, that there were significant new mechanics. I don't think I minded that it was a little bit more of the same in terms of what's the core thing that's fun about this game, but what was new was that the monsters were way harder because of certain things. I had to adapt my strategy. But overall, the structure and composition mirrored the stuff from earlier levels. Okay, so I'm going to take that to heart. Uh, I want to thank you for listening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off. Um, please make sure that you subscribe. If you've heard this, uh, subscribe on iTunes, on Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's something that's new that I'm starting up, um, my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter uh, for game dev updates uh or instagram on twitter i'm alex h fleming with underscores in between uh the words uh, alex h fleming uh and on instagram i am sandwich fleming uh more about sandwiches later i'm a big fan that's all you need to know uh, okay thanks for listening uh i'll see you guys next week